In a previous video, we saw that if you take a concave mirror, a concave mirror is a curved mirror uh, in which the inner part is reflecting, the inner side is reflecting, and if you incident a parallel beam of light, then these rays of light after reflection will get focused at a single point. They will converge at a single point called as the focus of that mirror. And you can get parallel rays of light from any source which is far away. Something like the sun or anything which is far away, the rays of light from that can be assumed to be parallel. In this video, what we'll do is we'll look at some applications of this concave mirror. Where do we use them in our daily life? All right, so let's begin. One of the applications we can see is in microscopes. So if I just show you a compound microscope, let me just show you that, a compound microscope over here. You may or may not have used it, but if you have, then you might, then you know that you keep your slide, the whatever you want to observe, or somewhere over here, and you need that slide to be lit up, otherwise you can't see it through the microscope, isn't it? And the way we light that slide up is by using a mirror over here. And what this mirror does is that it takes in the sunlight and then focuses all that sunlight right at this slide. Now, the, I, I, don't, I don't think in this picture the mirror is aligned properly, but if you align it, then we can focus all the rays of light from the sun to a single point, and we can make that, that focal point, that point where it gets focused, right on that slide, and the slide gets illuminated. All right, so there's a concave mirror down over here. It's a concave mirror. So next time when you're using a, a compound microscope, just touch that, mirror, touch that mirror and you can feel the concave part of it. Another similar pl place where you can see this is in your satellite dishes. Not satellite dishes, I'm sorry. These are dish TVs. These are the receivers of your dish TVs. Um, they're supposed to receive the radio signals, but you can see that there is a concave reflector over there. Now, this is not a reflector of visible light. This is a reflector of radio waves. Now, radio waves are pretty similar uh, to visible light, except that you can't see it, but everything is the same. Almost all its properties are pretty much the same. And so, the, these radio signals come from some radio tower which is far away, and as a result, we can also assume that the radio signals we get over here Let's let me let me draw some radio waves. The radio waves that come over here, we can also pretty much assume that they are. Let me draw it over here. It's easy to see. Or those radio waves, you can assume they are. Okay, let me choose. Okay, fine. So the radio waves which are coming over here, we can assume that they are parallel to each other. And when these parallel rays go and hit this particular reflector, it reflects these radio waves to a single point, as you can see. All the radio waves get reflected to a single point, and and that point is the principal focus, and it's that, that point you are gonna keep your radio receiver. And as a result, the receiver will receive a very strong signal, a very highly concentrated signal of radio waves, and that, that uh, signal will now then be sent to your TV, and you can watch television. One more application of this same concept is in solar cookers. We can use this principle to actually cook food. So whatever food you want to cook, you can keep it at the, so at the focal point of a giant mirror, and then when the sun is at the right place, like you know during the noon time when the sun is right above you, we just you know orient the mirror in such a way that all the parallel rays of light are being focused on the food that you want to cook, and then using the concentrated power of the sun, we can cook the food. That's the idea behind solar cookers. Solar cookers. Um, another application. It's a little bit different. Is found in flashlights or headlights of a vehicle. If you look at the back part over here, they're reflecting. That is a concave mirror back there. Huh, why are we using a concave reflector here? Are we trying to focus the beam of light here as well? Actually, no. In fact, over here, we're trying to do something exactly the opposite. So if we come back to the ray diagram, one of the cool properties of these rays is that we can reverse these rays and the diagram still holds true. What I mean is, if you look at this ray, this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray, right? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is we can reverse this, meaning if this is the incident ray, then this would be the reflected ray. Let me just show you what I mean. So just I'm just going to reverse all the arrow marks. Look at the diagram carefully. Just going to reverse all the arrow marks. And I'm saying the diagram still holds true. So let me just draw that over here. And the reason that is true is because, think about it, even if we interchange the incident ray and the reflected ray, 
the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will change. Let me just draw that. The angle of reflection. Before this was the angle of reflection and this was the angle of incidence. But now this will be the angle of incidence and this will be the angle of reflection because this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray. But it doesn't matter because they're both still equal to each other. And so the uh, rule of reflection will still work, isn't it? And that's one of the cool things about reflection, all right? You can always reverse the rays of light and it'll still hold true because the rules of reflection will still hold true. Now, what does this mean? This means, I mean, look at this. This means that if you have a point source kept right at the focus of that mirror, of that concave mirror, and that source will now start giving light in all the directions. If you consider the right light that falls on the mirror, after reflection, all the rays of light will end up becoming parallel to each other. Exactly the reverse. Before, the parallel rays are being concentrated at a single point. Now, a ray of light emanating from a single point is becoming parallel to each other. Okay, and so what's the use of this? Well, whenever we want to create a highly directional beam of light, well, we can use a concave reflector. That's exactly what's happening over here. So here is the bulb. Over here, you can see a tiny bulb over here, right? And the bulb is placed right at the focus of this entire reflector. And so if you look at the rays of light, the rays of light that are coming forward are just coming forward. Nothing will happen to them. But the rays of light that are going back, they hit the mirror, they hit the mirror, and because of this property, because the rays of light are emanating from the focus, these rays of light, after hitting the mirror, they get, um, they get reflected forward. And as a result, this flashlight ends up producing a beam of light which is directed forward. So it, and that's, even we've seen that, right? Flashlights produce a forward beam of light, pretty directional beam of light. And that's possible, that's happening only because there's a reflector behind. And the same thing is working true, the same thing also holds true for the headlights of a vehicle. All right, so what we did in this video is we looked at a couple of applications of concave mirrors. And all the applications we, we looked at were based on one principle, that parallel rays of light, when they hit the concave mirror, they all get focused at a single point. And of course, it's reverse is also true. I just like to talk about one last application before ending this video. There's also a very interesting application, not in light, but in sound. The same thing even works out for sound. Even sound can reflect, and even for uh, reflection of sound, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection turns out to be true. And so, the application comes in acoustics. If you're in a large hall and you want to address an audience, and then we can assume that the audience is sitting somewhere, somewhere, let's say the audience is sitting somewhere over here and you have this large hall over here, and suppose you are the speaker and you want to channel your audio, you, you want to channel your sound f in the forward direction and not sidewards, then what you can do is you can put a you know, a large concave reflector behind you. Now this would be a reflector of sound, not light. And that will ensure that any sound that goes back will get reflected forward like this and it will be channeled towards your audience. If you take a look at the side view mirror, the rear view mirror of a car or a bike, and if you touch its surface, you will find that it is not a flat mirror. It's bulged out a little bit, it's curved. Why is it a curved mirror? Why don't we use just a normal, regular flat mirror over there? And why are the objects in the mirror closer than they appear? We're going to answer these questions satisfactorily in this particular video. So to understand or to answer this, the secret lies in understanding curved mirrors. Now before we begin, we've already seen in a previous video one kind of curved mirror, a mirror in which the inner part is reflecting. And we call such a mirror as a concave mirror. And we saw what it does. We saw that if you were to incident parallel beam of light or parallel rays of light, then they all um, after reflection get concentrated at a single point called as the focus. So a concave mirror can converge a beam of light. But this time, we're gonna talk about what will happen if you were to make the outer surface reflecting. That's the focus of this video. What happens if you make the outer surface reflecting? So let's do that. Let's get rid of these rays. And let's make the outer surface reflecting. 
So when the outer surface becomes reflecting, now the reflecting part is bulged out. Can you see? Before the reflecting part, so over here, the reflecting part was forming a cave. So this was called as a concave mirror. But since now the reflecting part is bulged out, we call it as a convex mirror. The word vex literally means bulging out. All right, so the question now is, what does a convex mirror do? That's what we want to figure out. And again, we'll do the same thing what we did earlier. We will shoot parallel rays of light onto this mirror, and we'll use rules of reflection and see what happens to these parallel rays of light after reflection. All right, so let's do that. Let's incident parallel rays of light. Let's do that. So here they are, parallel rays of light, and we chose parallel rays because they are easy to analyze. It's easy to understand what your con what convex mirror is doing um, if you choose parallel rays of light. You can choose whatever rays you want. The physics remains the same, but it's easier for parallel rays. All right, so how do we figure out what happens to the rays of light after reflection? Well, the trick is we zoom in at every point of incidence. We zoom in so much and we, we only concentrate on the tiny patch. We assume that tiny patch to be flat. And why do we do that? Because we know how to deal with flat mirrors. We draw a normal, then we use the rule of reflection, and then we figure out where the reflected light is. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video and see if you can try this yourself. Just draw a rough sketch and just see if you can drop normals at every point and try to, you know, sort of get a rough idea of what the reflected light looks like. All right, let's do that. Let me do that over here. Okay, so I'm gonna do it for a couple of places and then I'll just show you what it looks like. So let's zoom in somewhere over here. Let's go over here. So if I zoom in at this point, okay, at this point over here, um, notice that this, I can approximate this to be a flat mirror like this. Okay, and once I know the flat mirror is like that, the next thing I do is drop a normal. In fact, we have done this in previous videos as well. So if this is not super clear to you, you can just go back and watch that video where we did that. But anyways, we're gonna do the same thing over here. So um, here is the angle of incidence because this is the incident ray. And so the reflected ray will go like this. How do I know it goes like that? Because the incident angle must be the same as the reflected angle. That should remain like this. All right, let me do that in one more place, somewhere over here. Let's do over here. Let's zoom in. Okay, now if I concentrate over here, the flat mirror looks somewhat like this, oriented this way, isn't it? Again, I'm gonna drop a normal. A normal means, just remember, it's a perpendicular that we draw. And now we have this as the angle of incidence. So the reflected ray will make sure that the reflected angle should also remain the same. All right, let's zoom back out. Let's go back to the original view. Let me just zoom out over here. And that's what it looks like. All right, and this is not very accurate because I did not use rulers or whatever, but I've done an accurate picture. So let me just show you what it looks like for all these places. So I highly encourage you to first try it yourself. Place it all in, uh, do it at all places and try it yourself. If you've done it, let me show you what it looks like, what it looks like for everywhere. So let me just over here. Here it is. This is what it looks like. And if you notice, you can see that after reflection, the rays of light are no longer parallel, they're all going away from each other. Which means your convex mirror diverges rays of light after reflection. That's the property of a convex mirror. And in contrast, just to remind you, in contrast, when we were dealing with a concave mirror, what was happening? A concave mirror, I'm just gonna show you uh, this way, over here, a concave mirror converges a beam of light to a single point, but a convex mirror diverges a beam of light. And you know what's interesting? The interesting is if you were to backtrace these, I mean, if you were to extend these rays of light, let me just do that. If you were to extend these rays of light, then these rays of light appear to start from that same point focus that we defined earlier. And so even for a convex mirror, we can define a focus. For a convex mirror, the focus is a point from where the rays of light appear to diverge from. Okay, it's not really diverging from that point, but it appears to do that. And, and we, when we define it, when the incident rays are parallel to each other. So in short, a convex mirror, as you, if we saw, a convex mirror diverges a parallel beam of light 
f- appearing to be from a single point, focus, and a concave mirror converges that parallel beam of light to a single point. So convex mirrors can diverge rays of light. Excellent. But what's the application of this? Where can we use this? I mean, I can't think of a, you know, a direct application of divergence of rays of light. I mean, where would we use that? Well, there is an application. And to understand that, we need to remember something about these ray diagrams. Remember that these rays are reversible, meaning we can just reverse the arrow marks. We can make the reflected rays the incident ray, and then the incident ray becomes the reflected ray. Why is it reversible? Well, because the rules of reflection still hold true. I mean, let's concentrate on this ray. If we were to reverse this, this becomes the incident ray. This becomes the reflected ray. And we and we can draw a normal somewhere over here. And when we reverse this, the incident angle becomes the reflected angle, and the reflected angle becomes the incident angle. But they're still equal to each other. The rule of reflection still is valid, isn't it? And that's why, even if I were to reverse these rays, I'll just do that, let me just do that over here. Even if I were to reverse these rays of light, rules of reflection still is valid, which means this is also a valid diagram. And this will help us understand what's the application of this. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. All right, in this reverse ray diagram, what you can see is that rays of light from various wide angles can be reflected towards you. What I mean is, say you are standing somewhere over here. This is this is uh, this is the top view of a head. Okay, I have drawn specs over here. Drawing eyes was a little difficult. Anyways, imagine you were standing in front of this mirror, and let's say there are some, there's something over here. There's some tree over here, and there's some bike over there, or something like that. Now, what's important to understand is that the rays of light from this tree and the bike, after reflection, can come straight towards you, which means just by moving a little bit, you can see a lot of stuff at a much wider angle that's behind you compared to what you can see with a plane mirror. So if, if if you had a plane mirror, let me draw that over here. If you had a plane mirror, and if you had that same ray of light, I'm drawing the same ray over here, notice it would have gone down after reflection because it would have missed you. As a result, it would have missed you. But because we have a convex mirror, you can see a lot of stuff behind you. So in other words, we can say it gives you a wider field of view. You can see what's behind you at a much wider angle than what a plane mirror allows you to do. And you can actually see that in this photo that I took. This is a convex mirror. It's bulged out and the mirror is curved like this. It's a convex. This mirror was kept near a parking lot somewhere over here. And notice when you look into it, you can see at a much wider angle. You can see pretty much at this end of the road. You can also see pretty much at this end of this end of the road. This is almost a 90 degree 90 degree angle and you can see all of it over here. Sure, it looks a little distorted, but you can see it. And so if you were to come from this side, even if you're riding in a vehicle from this side, you can just look into a mirror in this convex mirror and you can also see what's on this side. And so based on that, you can avoid collisions and other stuff. That's why these mirrors are pretty important. They're almost, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're installed a lot in these parking lots. And now we can answer our original question. It's for the same reason the side view mirrors of vehicles are also curved. They are convex. Same reason, so that when you look into it, you can see a little bit wider. You can un- you can see what's what's there behind you at a little wider angle than if you had a plane mirror over here. I just like to end this video now with one last thing. Why are the objects in the mirror closer than they appear? This is really interesting. So think about this. If you come back over here, let's look at this picture. If this was a flat mirror of say the same area, imagine you had a flat mirror of pretty much the same area. I hope you agree now that in in that mirror, we wouldn't be able to see as much as we can see over here. We just discussed that, isn't it? Which means a convex mirror can fit more things compared to what a flat mirror can fit in that same area, correct? But in order to fit more things, the things have to re- become smaller. Think about it. If you want to fit more things in that same area, shouldn't they all become smaller, right? So things in a convex mirror or the images in a convex mirror 
look much smaller than in a plane mirror. And of course, we'll look at this in great detail in the future videos, but as of now, hopefully from this reasoning, you can understand that things in a convex mirror or images in a convex mirror are always smaller than in a plane mirror. But we don't have an experience with convex mirrors. We have experience with plane mirrors. And so when we look into these convex mirrors and we look at these small images, our brain automatically thinks that these are far away because only when things are far away, they look very tiny. And that's why we feel that these things are pretty far away from us. For example, it looks like this truck is far away from this mirror, isn't it? But it's not, it's not really that far away. And that's why there's always a reminder over here to tell you that the objects in the mirror are actually closer than they appear. They appear to be far away because they are smaller. And therefore there's a good chance that we might do a misjudgment over there. We might take a sudden right turn thinking that these, these vehicles are far away. And therefore there's always a reminder to make sure that we take into the accounts. So this is pretty important when we're driving. And so to quickly summarize, when you have a curved mirror where outer surface is reflecting, we call that as a convex mirror. Vex means it's bulged out. The reflecting surface is bulged out. And if you insert in parallel, ra parallel rays of light on this mirror, then it diverges. So convex mirrors end up diverging rays of light. And their major application is in the fact that they give a much wider field of view when you look into it.